Hello, hello, everyone. It has been a minute. I know. Where have I been? I've been busy setting up and filming for a new media outlet I'm working for. Some of you may have seen my new studio on Instagram. I'm looking at it right now. It's cool as hell, and I'd be filming with it, but we are saving that set reveal for the launch of that media outlet. So watch that space. It's going to be up soon. But first, I'm here to give you an update on the hell world that is Canada around me, because honestly, Things are in such a steep decline that I want to ensure all of my viewers are given a fair warning about where we're headed before we go straight off the cliff. And I don't know if a month or two can really wait for this. Not too long ago, I stumbled onto a certain subreddit dedicated to discussing what many people see as the complete failure of the land of maple syrup and snow's housing market called Canada Housing 2. Canada Housing 2, you might think to yourself, what happened to Canada Housing 1? I'd give you three guesses, but this is Reddit after all, a major big tech platform, so it's the most obvious answer. Any discussion of the real causes of our major problems are essentially socially illegal to point out. And you've got it. The primary subreddit engages in massive censorship. Our Canada Housing's little brother, on the other hand, instead allows people to point out not just supply as an issue, but demand issues like mass immigration and wage suppression. And the posts on this Reddit are just heartbreaking. Real stories from real Canadians every day that have just given up. During my internship last summer, earning a top 5% income, I realized that no matter how hard I worked, how much I gave to the system, how many skills I learned, I would never be able to afford a home near where I grew up. A starter home, 960 square feet in my home city, KW, I think that's Kitchener-Waterloo, goes for $800,000. At current interest rates, even if I put my $130,000 down, I would still be looking at a monthly mortgage payment of $4,900 and total expenses of $5,600 when factoring in property tax and utilities. Who has that much cash flow? It makes me realize that if I am feeling hopeless, what reason is there for someone else my age with less privileges than I've had to even try? Why make something of yourself when no matter how hard you work, you will stay in the same position forever? There are posts like this endlessly on this page. I truly have no idea what we're supposed to say to younger Canadians. They have no future. You scroll through the top posts here and it's just Canadians who have done their best, done everything right, but keep failing for reasons entirely out of their control. Both the Liberals and Conservatives in this country love to keep suggesting this ridiculous notion that we just need more immigration to fill labor positions. But everyone living here in Canada knows that is not what's happening. What the guys at the top really want is a new slave class that works for pennies on the dollar, fattening the pockets of themselves and their friends. All you have to do is look at the lines you see of people queuing up for minimum wage work, with almost all of them being mostly comprised of Indians here on student visas. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone with functioning eyeballs that a situation like this is only going to spark conflict between different ethnic communities. The first people to tell you this will be Indians that have been born in this country and lived here their whole lives. This post is called, Racism Tension is Rising, and it is Trudeau's Fault. Multiculturalism in Canada is dead, and this government are the ones who killed it. I was born and raised in Toronto. My parents came to this country from India in the late 80s when the rules around immigration were very different than they are today. We had people coming from all over. There was a high bar for immigrants and people would actually integrate into Canadian society. This current international student scam is unprecedented and encourages ghettoization to an extreme degree. I lived in an actually diverse neighborhood. My friends growing up were Greek, Italian, Tamil, Chinese. Any kind of racial tension or animosity was practically non-existent. Even when I went to places that were 95% white, I never felt out of place. Today, this government is using this student bullshit to import an underclass of cheap labor from India to please their donors and corporate supporters. Large employers love the fact that they can pay next to nothing and get away with violating labor law. I worked security part-time during university. You would not believe the amount of bullshit rife in that industry because of this influx. 
not paying overtime, forcing people to work 16 hours straight, no breaks because they are dealing with desperate folks. My parents bought their home in a working class area of Toronto for $310,000 back in 2004, sold it for 1.3 million in 2021. My dad worked his way up to a decent standard of living as a blue collar factory worker in Toronto of all places. That seems like a ridiculous fantasy that these days. This wasn't an anomaly, even in our most expensive cities. You could work hard, save some money, and live a decent life. Today, some of my friends are professionals with master's degrees pulling in six figures or close to it, but even they are forced to live in their parents' basement. And of course, this is causing resentment amongst native-born Canadians who see a sea of Indians coming in, suppressing wages, bringing their bullshit cultural baggage with them, and living with nine others in a two-bedroom apartment. I can see the racial tensions bubbling under the surface online and in real life. If this isn't fixed immediately, this won't end well. It's to the point where I am ashamed to be Indian. If you talk to many older immigrants and second generation Canadians, we are royally effing pissed at this whole situation. Watch for the results of the next election. The Conservatives are going to sweep the suburbs of major cities, and these places are filled with immigrants and their children. I doubt the Conservative Party of Canada will really help us out this time either, though. They will be beholden to the same landlords and corporate interests as the Libs. I hope I am wrong. Apart from the corporations and politicians they're sponsoring who love to continue pushing down wages, nobody benefits, including those who have made the trip over for a better life. I will be paying almost $20,000 in taxes annually, can't buy a car because then I will have to say goodbye to any kind of savings, and forget buying a home because anything habitable is close to $700,000 plus, for which I will basically be a wage slave till my last breath. I came from India two years back with high hopes to start a fresh new future here and contribute to a flourishing and diverse economy. But now I'm going back. Already booked my one-way ticket to India for next month where I'll be making a bit less money, but my living standard will be way higher. I'll even be able to buy a really nice three-bedroom apartment, afford to eat out, take trips, and most importantly, start a family. The new Canadian dream is waking up with the realization that it was just a dream. Once again, you'll see endless posts like this. So many immigrants are realizing the Canadian dream is dead and are no longer bothering to even seek Canadian citizenship. But of course, nothing good ever happens. We aren't going to see a population reduction and house price dips again and wage growth as immigrants return home because the government is still pumping so many people through their non-existent border at such an incredibly extreme rate. I don't even mean by something like you know, a 10% increase per year. No, you have places like New Brunswick, the province, they have had more immigration in the past 24 months than they have had in the past 29 years. Coincidentally, their rent prices have also skyrocketed as well. Huh. Surely this has nothing to do with each other. Surely the drastic increase in demand has nothing to do with the increase in rent. This same pattern is replicating itself all across the country. And I actually think Trudeau is starting to panic himself. Like if you check out his X timeline, Twitter, whatever, uh, right now, every single day, his posts are almost exclusively about how he is desperately trying to fix the food prices and the housing crisis. It's bad. Like I'm telling you, everyone I know, rich or not, are struggling here right now. The fact that politicians are even talking about it and trying to address it tells you they're stressing. They're feeling it. Yet yeah, everything he says, once again, is just a band-aid on a bursting dam. Because as a good little globalist and neoliberal puppet, he doesn't want to touch the sacred cow that is mass immigration. Even the conservatives think you can fix a demand issue by simply building more houses, the supply, as if that does anything for the wider infrastructure that's put under, put under stress anyways. I mean, hell. When Justin decides to create new subsidized housing initiatives in certain towns, he's not even meeting the demand of the new immigration coming in, let alone the existing demand. Like in London, Ontario, for example, where they're getting 74 million over the next three years to build 2,000 units. Each year, 4,000 new people arrive to that area. Across the country, he's announced 100,000 new homes over the next three years. 500,000 people enter each year right now. Even a first grader could do the math on this. Quite frankly, the fifth graders, the five-year-olds, could do this math a whole lot better than our current regime, I think. 
And it's not just the immigrants who are going back home. So many Canadians are now planning to get out and away from the only place they have ever known. It's a regular conversation I'm having with people, daily, regardless of their political background. I have many friends who have already left over the past few years. And while 99% of these problems we have have been caused by this country being subjected to the rule of an insane liberal government my entire adult life, unfortunately, I really do believe that many Canadians will now swing even further left as a result. To quote J. Reg, when there's a financial collapse, you either go commie or you go fash. And I'm thinking we're going to see a commie revolt, if anything, simply because there's no housing. And there's probably a ton of resentment bubbling up against the property-owning class. This wouldn't exist if we just had reasonable levels of immigration. I'm not even saying get rid of it all. I'm just saying, like, sane. Just sane levels. This wouldn't exist if we had an actual free market and not people being taxed 40% of their income. But no. Instead, Canada is being run into the ground by a petty little tyrant and a ruling class unwilling to let the bubble they've created burst, and instead feel they can keep passing the buck off onto the next generation. Well, it looks like it's finally coming to a head. Congratulations, uh, Gen Z and millennials. You lost the game of uh, musical chairs for the the buck. (laughs) And honestly, I gotta say... um, I I overlooked this. I spent a ton of my time back in 2016 traveling the world, telling all about the problems going on everywhere else, the immigration going on in Europe, whatever. And and I kind of regret not realizing that most of the battle was going on on my own front door, that it was this drastic at home. So if you're Canadian, all I can say is be prepared. I'm not here to sell you false hope. I want to give you real options So make your situation and your family as safe as possible as things start to decline. You know, look around you, see where the best spot to live is. Maybe don't be in the cities. Maybe look if you can get out. I don't know. I'm not saying abandon ship. I'm just saying be prepared for things to get a little crazy in the future. And good luck to you all. Anyways, I appreciate you all letting me get that off my chest. Uh, I've been just seeing so much of this go around, you know, all around me every single day. There's so many pressures going on for the Canadian populace, and I don't doubt we are the model for what's going to happen in America as well, so be paying attention to this over there. And yeah, um, this was just a little update video, but I will be seeing you guys very shortly with the new media outlet that I will announce both on this YouTube channel and on my Twitter, so make sure you're following those. Hit all those bells, whistles, and buttons on here, and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you have your own thoughts, maybe go subscribe to Canada Housing too and vent there. It's a great place for at least a sense of community and some people talking about what can be done about this all. I appreciate you all so much and I'll see you again soon.